Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with, I think this is part three of my bookshelf overhaul series. I've been bad and I actually haven't taken anything that I unhauled from uh, the previous video. I have not taken that to the used bookstore and I actually already had prior to that video I already had a full bag of books that needed to go to the used bookstore, which also have not been carried there. Uh, so that is something that's on my to-do list. I really need to get to the used bookstore. But one thing I wanted to start doing was to take this shelf by shelf. And this was my ultimate goal when I started this series. I thought it's a good way to kind of merge both a bookshelf tour and an unhaul all in one uh, because this is going to allow me to see what I have. It allows y'all to see what I have and then we can make some tough decisions about whether or not we want some things to stay or we want them to go. And I'm not really going into this series with the intent to just completely purge my bookshelves, but there are a lot of books on my shelf that I am no longer interested in that I have read once, but I never intend to reread, uh, that I just plain didn't like, so why am I keeping them around? And so this series is just pushing me to ask really hard questions about my collection. And this has not been a heavy book collecting year for me. Uh, since I've been in a bit of a reading slump for the majority of the year, I have not been acquiring books the way that I used to. And again, this is a year, I think I stated this in my mid-year book freakout tag, this feels like a year for me that I had prior to BookTube. I didn't use to haul very much prior to BookTube and I also uh, didn't read as much as heavily. And so this year has definitely felt very retro for me in that regard and a whole lot of books have not been coming in. So I do fear when I unhaul these books finally and I go into the used bookstore, I'm scared, what am I gonna see there? What am I gonna wanna take home? But uh, that is a question for another day. I thought we would just go across this shelf uh, and we will take away books that I think need to go. Now, this is the main bookshelf, my main bookshelf. It is not the oldest bookshelf I have. I have a shelf upstairs and that's the one I'm scared to film a video around because the books are stacked two and three deep. And the ultimate goal is to replace that shelf by getting several others. And it feels kind of stupid to do that when that shelf would clearly keep the same amount of books all in one shelf. And if I buy two or three more that just stack them one deep, then that just means that I'm adding more shelves to the space when one shelf really has done the job over the years. But to be honest, if I don't see the books, I don't remember I have them. And so I know there are a lot of books on that shelf that really need to go. This one, I don't feel like I'm going to cull very much. Uh, and so let's just go on and get started. This is essentially going to be a bookshelf tour of this shelf. And I may or may not decide to get rid of some things. Now this top shelf here, I really feel strongly that I'm probably not going to unhaul. What I am going to do probably, and it's not going to be in this video, I'm just gonna change the books that are up here. My mom, who is kind of my booktube manager, she has said these books have been in my background for long enough and that it's time to uh, do a refresh and put some new titles up there. And I kind of agree with that, especially because I don't think these are very visually interesting. But I'm gonna turn the camera around and we will just go down the line. Okay, this is so weird. My camera just turned on a flash, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life for filming a video, but I'm not gonna question it. Uh, so this is essentially my reference shelf downstairs. I have a larger reference shelf that basically houses all of the books that I used in university. I have that upstairs. And so a lot of those are classics. A lot of those are textbooks that I just never sold away. These are books that I, for the most part, never used in school but that I would use in reference today. So these are just things that I have used for research on my own. Uh, so starting over here, we have Neil Gaiman, Norse mythology. I am not getting rid of that. Uh, that is one of my favorite Norse myth compilations ever. Uh, we then have the Sagas of the Icelanders, which is a really nice compilation and is a book that I find very valuable for reference. We then have Richard III by Paul Murray Kendall. 
I do not care for this edition because it was once a library edition from Toledo, apparently, and it has no front cover. It really is a very weird one. Uh, and so I, I do like it because it's easy to read, but Paul Marie Kindle has been very much outpaced by modern scholarship. This is one of the first books about Richard III that showed him in a positive light and reassessed kind of the rumors about him, let's say. And so this is very valuable in terms of historiography. I'm shocked I don't have another book about Richard III on this shelf or on any other reference shelf I have. Uh, so I would really like to get more about Richard. That shows me that that's kind of a blind spot for me, even though he is my favorite historical figure. I don't have much that I actually own. We then have Elizabeth of York by Alison Weir. I think I can get rid of this. Uh, I don't really care for Alison Weir's nonfiction writing, and I didn't really care for her bio of Elizabeth of York. So I think maybe let's get rid of that. Why don't we do it? I'm never going to use that for reference, so I think that's a good decision. We then have A History of Venice by John Julius Norwich. We're not getting rid of that. That's one of my favorite nonfictions of all time. John Julius Norwich is actually, in my opinion, the best historian of his generation. I genuinely love his writing, and I think he was thoroughly well-researched. And uh, I believe we lost him in 2019, and that was a major loss for the historical community, in my opinion. We then have Mary Queen of Scots by Antonia Fraser, another of my favorite biographies. Uh, I love this, and I really love the naked spine of it. And this is the reason why the rest of these have naked spines, is because I love the spine with her seal on it. And I thought that that looked really nice. We then have Robert K. Massey's Peter the Great. I'm iffy on this one because I last year went on a bit of a Russian history kick and I ordered all of Robert K. Massey's books in paperback. So I don't necessarily need this edition. I might get rid of that, but for the time being, I think I'm going to leave it on the shelf. We then have the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Aeneid. I would like different versions of these. They are all used and they all have notes in them. The Odyssey is the only one that has my notes in it. And I think in the end, when I reread these, I would like to have a blank copy just to do my own annotations in. So let's, let's think about that. I'm not going to get rid of them until I have a different copy. I've moved you a little bit closer to see my short stack of books. These are all UK paperbacks, so they are extremely small. They are so short, uh, and they fit really well when you do them horizontally like this. I am not getting rid of any of these. I love all of these. The French Revolution by Ian Davidson I got from Shakespeare and Company when I went to Paris the last time, and it's a very, very good nonfiction uh, about the French Revolution, and so that's kind of why it wound up on my reference shelf. The Darkening Age by Catherine Nixie is actually a book that infuriated me when I read it, but it is about the so-called Dark Ages and the early medieval period, and she blames Christianity for basically the Dark Age, and so her argument is very interesting, and her scholarship is weird in some places when it comes down to that, in my opinion, but uh, it's an interesting book that covers a lot of different historical figures and kind of smaller periods in the medieval period that I don't see covered very often. So that wound up on the reference shelf. Uh, Dante by Barbara Reynolds is a bio of Dante that I picked up when I was last in Florence at the Dante's House Museum. So it's very much a treasure of mine. The Ugly Renaissance by Alexander Lee is so good. This is a nonfiction about the Renaissance, and it's all about the darker parts of it. I picked this up in Milan the last time that I was in Italy, and so once again, it is a treasure to me. Viking Britain by Thomas Williams is very, very good as well, uh, and so is Alfred's Britain by Max Adams. Alfred's Britain by Max Adams is my favorite nonfiction on the Viking period. In terms of more modern nonfiction, nonfiction published in the last 10, 15 years, that's possibly my favorite. And so that encompasses all of my various interests really right there. Vikings, the Renaissance, <laughs> uh, the medieval period, everything is kind of encompassed right there. We then have The Romanovs by Simon Sebag Montefiore, which is a really famed nonfiction. This was a gift from a dear friend and 
I really love this biography. I know a lot of people have mixed opinions about it, but I thought it was really good. So it's wound up here. It's also just gorgeous. And I love the spine and I just adore the Romanovs. I could learn about them for days and days and never get tired of it. I then have Dante, a biography by John Took. This was sent to me by, I think this was Yale University Press. This is a very good, but very dense biography of Dante. And I don't actually recommend it. If you are a beginner to Dante, that's not the one you should pick up pick up Barbara Reynolds, but uh, it's very, very good if you are a Dante fanboy or fangirl like me. So we've really only eliminated one book on the top shelf. That's okay. You know, that's okay. This may possibly go, and if it does, then I will have made space up here. I think anyway, I'm going to rearrange this, as I said, so that more books that you haven't seen or that you're not so familiar with are on this top shelf, but it is nice to have a reference shelf downstairs and upstairs. Maybe in general, I should merge those two areas. Okay, this is the second shelf, which is the shelf that I think you see the most often. I'm normally sitting in this area. So this is the shelf you are probably most familiar with. And I am pretty sure there's going to be nothing on this shelf that I cull, but maybe not. Let's see. So this starts my Penguin Black Spines. And the shelf below it, the next shelf we'll do, is actually where the rest of them live. And let's just go on and go through these. There may be a couple in here that I want to get rid of. The truth is, I will tell you, when this all started, when I just started getting Penguin Classics, I always thought, because I just love the Black Spines so much, I really intended to keep everything, whether I liked it or not, because I wanted a collection of the Black Spines. Now, that doesn't matter as much to me. I would rather my library reflect books that I loved. So, I think it's time to make some tough decisions and possibly get rid of more than a few of these to make room on the next shelf for other Penguin Classics and other Classics collections. Okay, up at the top we have Captain Blood by Raphael Sabatini. I've not read that yet. The Picture of Dorian Gray, I'm going to keep. The Letters of Vincent Van Gogh, I also haven't read yet. Uh, Great Expectations, Hard Times, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, all by Charles Dickens. And I am going to get rid of Great Expectations and The Mystery of Edwin Drood. I have my eye on an edition of Great Expectations that is in this Barnes & Noble Classics edition. And I would just much rather have that one. And I'm trying to tell myself now, even if a book is my favorite, I don't need 10 different editions of it. I've never wanted that. But even having two editions, when a book is in a foreign language and it's been translated like Dante, this is me cheating so that I can have 15 editions of Dante if I want them. But if it's in a different translation, that makes sense to me to have more than one of. An English classic like Great Expectations, I don't need more than one copy of. And I already have a Knickerbocker Classics edition of it, but I want that. I want that bad. So let's go on and move these. So we're going to get rid of Great Expectations. Uh, this is a used copy as well, and I really just got this years ago because I wanted to have an edition of it. I read it for the first time on my Kindle, and it has other people's notes in it, which, as I said earlier, I'm kind of interested, particularly with favorite books, I would like to have a blank copy of the book to do my own annotations in. So this one is going to go. I haven't read Hard Times, so that's going back on the shelf. It just was included in my uh, Charles Dickens section. And then we have The Mystery of Edwin Drood, which I listened to on audio last year, and I just don't feel attached to. It's an unfinished book. So I read it and I enjoyed it but I'm just going to let this one go. I have no interest in collecting Dickens in this edition. If I did, I would keep those. Uh, so next we have up The Betrothed by Alessandro Manzoni, which is an Italian classic that I am dying to read. I just don't know why I keep holding off on this one, but I'm dying to read that. The Secret History by Procopius, I don't necessarily feel like I need that. I read this last year for Ancient Sathon, and it's fine. I don't feel as though this edition gave you much background. If you're not familiar with Byzantine history, whoo, honey, this one is confusing. And so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm glad that I read it. This is one of my favorite images on the cover, though, from the Basilica of San Vitale in Ravenna, Italy. 
It's a mosaic of Justinian, the Byzantine emperor. Isn't it gorgeous? Just imagine the workmanship that went into that. We then have The Lives of the Artists by Giorgio Vasari, my favorite, possibly one of my favorite books uh, at work. We have like a disaster plan at the archive and you can pick 10 things that you would go back in for, you know, if the repository flooded or if something caught on fire, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You pick your 10 favorites, you know, that you would really want to save. Uh, Lives of the Artist by Vasari is on my list in my own library. Frankenstein, the 1818 text by Mary Shelley, The Love of My Life. We're not getting rid of that. Pamela by Samuel Richardson. Now, this is an iffy one. I haven't read that yet. I kind of wonder if I would just prefer to read that on Kindle. I'm on a bit of a Kindle kick right now. That's always a dangerous thing for me because then I start to think, oh, I just want to read on the Kindle forever. And I know that I will eventually move out of my Kindle phase and I will go back to reading physically. I don't mind reading classics on Kindle. I just tend to prefer to read them physically, but I feel like I want to get rid of that actually. But I'm going to leave it for the time being. I'll wait till the end and then we can make a decision about that one. Then we have Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens at the very bottom, which you might not can see. That's one I also haven't read. It's a very used edition and I'm tempted to get rid of that as well and maybe just pick up the Wordsworth Classics edition because I have other Dickens books in that edition and I actually really like them. I don't need many notes for Dickens or for many Victorian classics, period. So I kind of like the Wordsworth editions for Victorian classics specifically. We then have four of these kind of newer signature classics that Barnes & Noble came out with last year. I think these are absolutely stunning and I'm not getting rid of them. Uh, Mansfield Park, one of my favorite Jane Austens. Dracula, which is historically not my favorite. Y'all probably know that. Uh, the Scarlet Letter, which I have not read, but I am excited to read. Uh, and then Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, but this is the 1831 revised text that she released. So I do need two copies of Frankenstein. I actually own four copies of Frankenstein, don't tell anybody. So then we have over here, kind of in a way, a spillover from my reference shelf, but also just current fiction that I have really loved and enjoyed. The spillover from my reference shelf is the Viking Great Army in the Making of England. This was such a disappointment to me. This came out last year and I really thought it was going to not reinvent the wheel, but I thought it was going to give us something new, but it did not tell me a single thing that I didn't already know about the heathen army. It really did not. And so I was kind of disappointed in that. I don't necessarily want to get rid of it because it's just gorgeous. I mean, look at that. It's stunning. I'm not getting rid of that just because it's too pretty. So then we have The Collector of Lives, Giorgio Vasari and the Invention of Art, which is a bio of artist Giorgio Vasari. And I'm not getting rid of that either because I haven't read that yet. I do feel as though I'm really going to enjoy it though. We then have Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, which I guess I just put there because I think the spine is gorgeous. And I really enjoyed that when I read it earlier this year. We then have When Women Ruled the World by Cara Cooney, which was one of my favorite nonfictions last year. And this is about six queens of ancient Egypt. So we're definitely keeping that. But see, again, I feel like that, The Viking Great Army and The Collector of Lives, those are all three books that should be on the reference shelf. Though I haven't read The Collector of Lives yet, I feel like that's where it will wind up. Uh, but then we have a YA trilogy, Crown of Feathers, Heart of Flames, and Wings of Shadow. I love this series, just absolutely adore it. So it may not stay here permanently, but I am not getting rid of them. We then have Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian, which was one of my favorite books of last year. I am not kidding. I love that book. It is an Arthurian retelling. If you haven't read it, please read it and tell me what you think. So we really only called a few from this shelf. And looking back, you know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm getting rid of Pamela and I'm getting rid of our mutual friend. I think I'm going to be happier if I go on and do that and then I know that I've made space for the shelf down below to grow up here. This is also just one of the Penguin Classics that I don't like. You can hear it. Look at it. I don't like how stiff it is. A book that size should be floppy. Pamela, I'm pretty sure I just picked up on a whim because I saw it used. And 
I'm trying to stop that. I really am. So when I want this one, I think I'll just pick this up on Kindle. I have struggled in the past with 18th century literature, so uh, I feel like that's possibly a better bet. Wow, so that shelf did change quite a bit. Uh, let's go down below. Okay, here we go. This is the official Penguin Black Spine shelf. And we have got to do this fast because I am crouching basically on my knees. So we have two books on the top, The Romance of the Three Kingdoms and The Book of the City of Ladies. I just talked about those in my recent wrap up. That's why they're sitting there. Now they can move down here officially as books that I have at least attempted to read. And so I was trying to keep kind of the upper shelf books that I haven't read. I have read Dorian Gray many times. So I've also read Lies of the Artists many times. I, I think we should move some things around. That's possibly another video. But then we have Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War. I know I'm getting rid of that. I just am getting rid of it. I am not really a big fan of Greek history. I am sorry to say. I am just not a big fan of ancient Greek history. I DNF to Rodotus last year. I tried to run a readathon of it. It just was not working for me. So I'm getting rid of this. If I do read it again, I would like to try it on audiobook because I've heard a lot of people have a lot of success with ancient Greek history on audio. We then have Ovid's The Metamorphoses, the erotic poems by Ovid, the Fausti by Ovid. I love Ovid. Ovid is one of my favorite ancient poets. So we're not going to get rid of that. We have The Twelve Caesars by Suetonius, one of my all-time faves. We're also not getting rid of that. Njal's Saga and the Prose Edda by Snorri Sturluson. Uh, so that's just my small Norse collection. That will definitely grow, I feel like especially because Penguin seems very interested in releasing more sagas in the Black Spine. So that's an interesting section, and I think possibly that will probably grow a little bit more. We then have the Portable Dante, and I picked that up last time I was in Florence, and we're not getting rid of that, of course. That's one of my most treasured. That's also in my top 10. Uh, we then have The Complete Plays by Christopher Marlowe. And I love Christopher Marlowe. Uh, I have some additions also upstairs from the Penguin Black Spine because that reminds me, I know I have Christopher Marlowe's complete poetry upstairs somewhere. So what scares me is that not everything that is a Penguin Black Spine that I own is actually on this shelf. Oh dear. So see, that's, that's another video in this series. Then we have... Daniel Defoe's A Journal of the Plague Year, which I thoroughly enjoyed. It's a hard thing to say that you enjoyed a plague book at this time, but I really did. I think his writing is super enjoyable. Um, so I really, really liked that. And I'm interested in reading more by him because I just thoroughly enjoyed that when I read it. Uh, then we have Abigail and John Adams and their letters. I kind of went in chronological order on this shelf, and I'm really glad I did, but I don't think I have once picked that up and gone through it since I got it. And I think possibly it's time for that one to walk. So here is the cover. We once again have this flash on. This is so high tech. I got a new phone last week, and I'm just trying to figure it out. I am not tech savvy. So this is the letters of John and Abigail Adams. I don't know. I'm gonna say we get rid of that. We then have Villette by Charlotte Bronte and The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall by Anne Bronte. And I have debated for many, many years just getting rid of those editions. And I'm not really sure why in the case of Villette. I DNF'd Villette. I really was not enjoying it. I loved The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall, but that is such a beat up copy that I really, if I wanted to reread it, I really don't think I would want to reread it in that edition. But it does have my annotations in it. Because I did tab this, I wrote notes in this, I just don't really want to be parted with this one because I put all of my observations in it. So that's up for debate. That's possibly something that I will choose to get rid of later on. The House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I am going to get rid of this because I am interested in having my Nathaniel Hawthorne collection be the Oxford World's Classics collection. So uh, that's why I'm going to get rid of this. I actually haven't read this one, 
but I think I would be happier to have all of his works in the same edition. This also has other um, annotations in it and it has this older font type which I just don't enjoy reading where it's kind of blurred. I don't know I just feel very weird about this typeface this older typeface where they've clearly just copied an older edition of the book. I don't care for that so I'm going to get rid of this one. Moving into the back half we have Romola by George Eliot we have The Selected Poems by Tennyson, The Ring in the Book by Robert Browning, Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell, The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. Uh, and that kind of finishes the more modern black spines, except for The Ring in the Book. We then have some older black spines that I, I am feeling quite vicious about. I am feeling like I should just get rid of some of those, uh, particularly the ones that have prior annotations in them, if they are going to be all-time favorites of mine or books that I'm going to use for research for anything. Again, I always say, what am I researching? But uh, I just like to have that door open. <laughs> you know, you never know when you're going to want to write the great American novel. So let's move these things down just a little bit. I love Mary Barton. This is just a Mary Barton interlude to tell you that I love Mary Barton and it is one of my favorite Victorian novels. We have The Lives of the Later Caesars. This is in some ways um, a sequel a little bit to uh, Suetonius's The Twelve Caesars. I enjoy this. It's not as good as Suetonius. But I'm going to keep that because clearly I have my annotations in it. And that's in very good shape. A lot of these older ones are just in very poor shape and they are really falling apart. That's kind of why I want to get rid of them. We have Marcus Aurelius, The Meditations. This was my copy from college. This is one that I am getting rid of because it is in very poor shape and the pages are falling out of. So I might want to read this again, but it would be in a different edition. Then we have a Welsh classic. I love this and the edition is really, really great. So we'll keep that. We have Joinville and Bill Hardwin's uh, Chronicles of the Crusades. High recommend from me. If you have never read a primary source about the Crusades, this is good. And this is a really good edition of it. So we will keep that. The Alexiad by Anna Comnena is also a chronicle of the First Crusade from the perspective of a woman, which is incredible. This edition is just in very, very poor shape, but I think this has gone out of print, so I hesitate to get rid of it. We have the Nibelungen Lead, which is a German classic that I really love. This is also in kind of poor shape, and I think the pages are falling out of this one. But again, I feel like this went out of print and that Penguin doesn't print it anymore. Maybe they do, but I'm not going to get rid of this or Anna Comnena until such time as I know that it is still printed by them. Goethe, The Sorrows of Young Werther, we will keep. Alberti on painting which is very interesting and is basically a handbook on painting from the Renaissance, the very early Renaissance at that. And I need this for research purposes. And I really, I mean, I really mean that. I actually have used that for research. Last but not least, we have The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. This is clearly an abridged copy. And I recently bought another abridged copy of this. So I think I'm going to let this one go. Maybe I will read the introduction, take my notes from that, and then get rid of this one. Feeling pretty good about the space that has been made there. So we've made some good space in the penguin world, I feel. This is the bottom shelf and it is the hardest one to film. So we'll probably go through this quite quickly. This has been overhauled quite frequently. And so it now houses books that have really recently come in for the most part. So we have the Grisha trilogy that was given to me by a colleague. I love that box set, not parting with it. An Affair of Poisons by Addie Thorley I read last year and it was just fine. I don't think I would ever reread it, but it is such a beautiful book that it has survived many, many unhauls just because of its beauty. So I say we keep it, we keep it just a little bit longer. We have Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood, which I have not yet read. That's a Jane Eyre retelling, and I'm excited to read that in the fall. We have Buddenbrooks and the Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. I also have 
his Dr. Faustus upstairs somewhere. So that's going to come down here. I don't know what is happening right here. We have some rogue Penguin Classics. Excuse me. The Mahabharata Pleasure by Gabriella D'Annunzio. Waverly by Sir Walter Scott. And then we have kind of an edited version of The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. That is not the full Fairy Queen and I don't understand why. So we will definitely move those up after I finish filming this. I'm not getting rid of any of those. We then have My Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Return of the King of the Two Towers. Why are they out of order? We don't know. But uh, I like to have an edition of Lord of the Rings. I don't think if I ever reread them that this is the edition I would read them out of, though, sadly. I think they are very unwieldy paperbacks, so I don't know what I would do there. The Essex Serpent is a book that I am 100% no longer interested in. So I think I'll get rid of that one, but again, I'll have to do that after I reorganize the Penguin Classics. We then have six more books that are recent additions to my shelf, most of them Book of the Month picks. Uh, Kai Kai by uh, Vashnavi Patel, which I DNF'd. Book of Night by Holly Black, which I also DNF'd, so that doesn't really bode well. The Hacienda by Isabel Cañez. Uh, then we have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, which I am very excited about. And I don't intend to get rid of either of the ones that I DNF'd. I think I need to come back to that with fresh eyes. I think I DNF'd them because of being in a reading slump. We then have Daughters of a Dead Empire, which is about the Romanovs and is essentially an Anastasia retelling. And we have Passion by Jude Morgan, which is a historical fiction about uh, Mary Shelley and the women of the Romantic period. I don't see the need to get rid of anything on this shelf, but maybe the Essex Serpent. So we have decided to get rid of several books, actually more than what I thought. Uh, when I started looking at this shelf, I really did not think that I was going to unhaul much of anything. I'm glad that I found a few to unhaul. I just feel good knowing that more books are leaving than are coming in. And so that makes me feel as though I can get really organized with the shelves that I have currently before I even think about getting other shelves. So we got rid of, I will count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven books. And I think that's a pretty good unhaul. I now really desperately need to go to the used bookstore and I need to put that at the very top of my to-do list. But I think the Penguin Classics specifically looks really good. I mean, we got rid of several of these. We got rid of several down here. And I know, like I said, I know there are some rogue Penguin Classics elsewhere in the house. And I now feel like they possibly have a place to go when I decide to move them down here. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, once again, this is only the beginning of the bookshelf overhaul. I'm scared of some of the shelves that I have upstairs. I really am because I've just been placing books in random places because essentially I have no room. But that is bookshelf overhaul number three. I would love to know if you've been unhauling lately. Uh, I really enjoy unhauling almost as much as hauling. I just really enjoy it. Knowing that I am creating space is such a joy to me. But uh, that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.